uh, hi friends and welcome. We're gonna vamp here for a couple minutes and uh, you know let folks settle into their virtual chairs. Um, <laughs> and I'm just gonna start with you. How are you doing? How's how's your life today? What's great about your life today? My my life here in Seattle is rainy, and while yours in California, there is nice and sunny. I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> <laughs> But I miss everyone. I miss seeing everybody. I, I know there have been some conferences, but it's it's uh, really fun to have everyone here. Yeah, Angie, how are you? What's great about your life today? I'm the, this is like my the, the question I'm picking up today. <laughs> question your of your day. Oh my yeah. gosh, somebody's here from Thailand. That's amazing. Hi. Um, <laughs> no, I'm with Anne. It's uh, it's really rainy and really cold. Do you see us in our like? <laughs> turtlenecks over here. I feel a little bit ridiculous, um, but excited to see a whole bunch of folks from all over, yeah. um, including a couple people who are rubbing in their sunshine. It's yeah. fine. We'll get sunshine back eventually. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm excited for this. This is going to be a good, good conversation. Yeah, I'm excited too. Well, the, the, the actual check-in question now that folks have, have arrived is, what brings you here today? We're curious to hear, like, what draws you to this, this particular webinar? Um, and I'm gonna write that at the top of the page. Um, what brings you here today? Because, and we don't have time, if we had like a lot more time, we would sort of like pass the mic around. But we'd love <laughs> for all of y'all just to share what brings you here today. Um, I'll share, I'll, actually, I'll share an answer to that question. First of all, what's great about my life today is, um, I get to do work that I love. I spent the day in flow, a lot of emails back and forth with Angie and doing work that I really care about. And I know that that's true for counselors, but I just had this moment again today where I was like, this is a good life. I'm working on interesting problems. So um, that, that's the check-in question I'll pick. Oh, awesome. Um, Tanika says, I love Ethan. I love Corsava, so I'm stoked for this. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to, to you. Great to see you. Well, here's what we're up to today. So we <laughs> wish I wish this was in a room where we could all kind of have a town hall thing and we could have snacks and, you know, cookies and tea and stuff. And that would be much more our vibe, much more fun for us. But we're doing it this, you know, in this webinar style. We're going to ask you all a bunch of questions. Uh, we're going to ask you to speak up in the chat. And then we'll also at some point share with you a little questionnaire form type thing that will allow us to capture some of the stuff that you're sharing. So when that link comes, that's our way of capturing all the things. So thanks for that. Please type in that once we send it. Um, but we're here to talk about Corsava. We're here to talk about there's an interesting inflection point that Corsava is at. And we want to start by hearing from Anne, just sharing about a brief history of Corsava um, and where, you know, Corsava has been. And then uh, what what sort of prompted this transition and what, what's what's happening now? And then Angie's going to show a little about what, what does Corsava look like? Some of you know, and some of you are like, I kind of know. So we'll share a little bit about that. And then I'm going to guide us through a little exercise where we're going to think about what might be possible together. And we want to share some ideas and get some, some thoughts from you. Before we get into all that, I want you to meet these folks who some of you know, Anne, but maybe not everybody knows Angie. Angie, would you mind just introducing yourself briefly and and how you know how you got here <laughs> you don't yeah, even of know course. how you got um, here quick intro yeah so i'm angie lungeon and i uh lungeon rhymes with absolutely nothing except <laughs> dungeon um which as a former high school math teacher you can imagine the poor decision making process that led to me telling students that um and then the sign they created for my door which was lungeon's math dungeon um, all in good fun. Um, so I come from a high school teacher background um, and through the nonprofit world and then ended up at Corsava. And I am your um, I am your woman behind the curtain. <laughs> so when you are asking for help, um, it's me. Uh, and I love getting to talk to you guys. And I share some of your like pain points of things that you want to make better. I um I feel like I have a good sense of what those things are, but uh, but I really only hear from those of you who contact me. So I'm excited to hear from a larger group and um, really looking forward to kind of the next step with Corsava. Um, let's see, what am I missing? Oh, my official title is uh, Chief Operating Officer for Corsava. So, um, but we joke that I'm just 
I don't know. Am I the am I the puppet master? I don't know what I am. I like that. And <laughs> puppet master. Thank you. <laughs> And let's kick it over to you. I mean, oh yeah, it's just really great to see all those names over there on the on the chat. I'm super excited to connect with everybody, and it's a real turning point for me. It's a very emotional day, I think, to see all of these people here, and to see Ethan and Angie and all of the people that I care about really sort of taking it to the next level. And and. It's my baby from way back. A lot of you know that, and I'll just give a, a brief background. About 15, 16 years ago, I made a big transition from technology and, you know, I decided to work with people instead. <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was a huge transition for me. And so I volunteered at the Gates Foundation at some underserved high schools here in Seattle. And it was, uh, I was, I have to admit, I was terrified to meet with kids because I hadn't really had done that. I mean, I, I had kids. And it just seemed like a really pivotal and, pivotal and important time in their lives. And in a lot of cases, I had one meeting with them. And so I, I would sit down and I'd think to myself, you know, oh, they're looking at the College Board site and they're picking on size and location and some really boring attributes that I knew I had to explain to them anyway. And so I thought, how am I going to solve this problem of having a really great conversation right from the get-go that really sort of, you know, like doing a puzzle with a kid or, or doing driving in the car with them where they don't have to look at you, but they can, they can really kind of think about some things that they had never occurred to them. And so I, I laminated a set of cards with some really bad, um, probably illegally downloaded uh, Microsoft clip art. And and created this card for, uh, these cards for myself that they sorted into piles of what they really wanted and didn't want and, and what they really didn't care about. And so many people asked for them. I got them made into the hard copy cards. And I'm sure a lot of you have those really old cards that are kind of fun. And, and I found the parents were super excited about it because they, they were surprised by what the kids uh, selected. And also the parents were, were, it was a good excuse when they looked at the list, they say, oh, now I see why that school's on the list. So it opened, it broke the ice, it opened conversations. But but then it just became necessary to, to bring it to more kids because so many people were asking, can we do this online? Can we, can I do it at my school? I can't have the hard copy cards for every kid. And so we took it to the cloud and, um, and a lot of people, you know, would switch back and forth. Uh, but then COVID hit <laughs> and Angie and I, single-handedly, can I call it single-handedly when it's Andy, Andy and I were doing this uh, through COVID. And, and I did a lot of soul searching. We were, we were bringing on a lot of schools. There were so many capabilities. All of you guys have been so great about bringing your ideas to the table. And I thought, you know, I just can't do this on, on my own. Angie and I are going to need, we had developers, but we needed, we needed creativity. We needed scale. We needed people to really think out of the box and take it and run with it. And I'm no spring chicken, let's face it. <laughs> so uh, I'm super excited about that next phase. And I thought to myself, you know, what am I going to do? Am I going to get out there and raise money or am I going to, who could I talk to? And of course, the person who refers the most students to Corsava, who mentions us in his book, who does the values exercise. And I saw so much overlap with what Ethan did and what I did. And there was such an overlap. I thought that would be my dream, that, that Ethan would be interested in Corsava. And of course, then he posted this really great picture on Facebook. <laughs> of his, I think it was his daughter when she was a toddler throwing all the cards up in the air. And I still have that in my file. They're all over the floor. And I thought, you know what? This is the guy I want to go to. And uh, it, it worked. I mean, it, I mean, he opened arms just we, 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 you know, it was fast. We got it all figured out. And, and here we are. And I'm super excited. This is the guy and the team to really take it to the next level because we have so many ideas built and we have so many of your ideas we're hoping to get today. And there's just much more potential. So thank you. I want to thank you. Ethan. Heart yeah. emoji. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I, I liked hearing some of the backstory too. I didn't know. All that. <laughs> um, well, well, thank you. And, and, and I'm feeling, I feel really honored and I feel some of that tenderness too, of like how the sort of, um, 
the preciousness of this thing that you've spent so much time on and energy on. And I hope to be a good steward of this whole thing. And, and <laughs> not you know, about that. Well, just so folks know that like, you know, anyway, we'll talk more about that just a little bit about terms of next yeah. step. Let's talk. I want Angie, would you be down to just give us a, a few minutes for folks who may not be as familiar with Porsava, what are the things that Porsava does and just take us through a few different pages and take us inside. The yeah, office. for sure. I'm yeah. I'm afraid for those of you who are new to Corsava, this is just not going to be nearly enough. Um, you know, you're going to get just a little taste and this might be, you know, old news for those of you who are uh, long term users. But um, just a quick kind of brief overview of where we are right now. We're going to hopefully my share. Yes, there. There is my screen. Hopefully you're all seeing my screen. Um, this is my Minerva McGonagall account. So this is my test account with the Harry Potter, Potter kiddos. Um, and just, you know, a few things for those of you who are new to Corsava, this is where you land when you come in and, um, to invite a new student, you'll click that add new student button. Highly, highly, highly recommend you use your unique student registration link. This just works so much more smoothly than sending them an invitation. Uh, but for those of you who are really into that invitation piece, you can do that here. Um, and there's, again, lots more of this. Uh, you can contact our support if you need help, but there's lots of resources for you on our website too. Um, oh, someone's asking to make the screen bigger. I don't know how to do that. How do I do that? Does anyone know that we can't make this in? Uh, are you on a uh, Mac or desk or a PC? I'm on a desktop a PC. I don't know how to do it. Sorry, friends. You'll have to go to Corsava.com to see more. <laughs> um, Angie lives in Redmond, Washington, where Microsoft is. So nothing yeah. no Mac over there. But my tech support is not here today. Um, let's see if there's like a full screen option here. Ooh, did that do it? No, but that's fine. I okay. mean, it's it's a little zoomy thing that I can do on this, but apparently PC doesn't do that anyway. Sorry. It must. Anyway. I just made, must not know how to do it. Um, right. Apologies. Uh, right. I will. I'll continue to try looking for it as I poke around. Um, within your students, uh, you can view all the students that are associated with your account. You can see everything that they have added to Corsava. So you can see their card sort results. You can see their location preferences. If you or they have added colleges to their list, you can uh, view those colleges. You can also um, view their impressions if they've shared any. So in this case, Fleur has started to look at Barnard College and she's not loving it for the arts in this case, but she's pretty happy with the appearance, et cetera. So these are things that can um, guide some of the conversations, et cetera. Lots of tips yeah. coming in on how to make the screen. I know, <laughs> unfortunately I have like six different three little dots and none of them seems to do anything. No, 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 it's for us. We're good, we got it. Yeah, we're, good. Got it. we're good. Um, and then, and now my mouse won't work. So those are all things you can do with your students and that you can view in your students. Um, your cafe, and for those of you who do not yet have uh, the cafe, here, helping. Um, if you do not yet have cafe access, folks, all you have to do is click on cafe and request it <laughs> um, and I'll get you set up. Uh, for those of you who have been in the cafe, you already know that this is a place to look for recommendations for your students. So we'll pick Pavardi, see what recommendations she gets based on her card sort results. And we can also make adjustments. If we're thinking about our Parvardi, um, I don't actually remember from the books how studious she was, but maybe she's not going to go to the most exclusive schools in the country. Um, and so you can make those adjustments there with that admit rate to see how that changes the experience for the list. You can also adjust cards if you need to. So you can play around with, uh, with the recommendations in the cafe. 
You can also start from a research and a kind of a questioning space. Um, what cards do you want to know about? So, you know, are you really interested in uh, computer science programs at schools with a collaborative environment? So we can see there are 326 schools with great computer science programs, but what happens when we add in that collaborative environment aspect? What are we going to start to see? And again, you can move that admit rate to adjust for kind of the group of students you're thinking about. So lots of opportunities to play around with uh, information um, and different groupings of cards, including location. So that third tab down here, uh, if you know the student wants to be in a particular region of the country or a particular state, you can add in that information as well. And I know that's just like the tiniest taste of what you can do, <laughs> um, but there is so much more. Um, and lots of things that we're thinking about too. If you're uh, curious about our resources for you, oops, that didn't go where I wanted it to go. All right, we'll go here. If you're curious to learn more about all those different pieces, the cafe, um, maybe you want to edit your card deck for a particular group of students, we've got tons of information here on our resources for counselors page. So you can get to that from our just regular old Corsava website. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. Thank you all for your patience as I navigated and- You're good, that was great. <laughs> you know what not everybody knows, but some people know, Anne, is the name where Corsava came from. Will you just share that with <laughs> I think it's so cool. Well, I, you know, we were, uh, it. we had a little family challenge about uh, I don't know when we named it, maybe seven years ago, we decided, okay, so whoever comes up with a name has to take everybody else out to dinner. <laughs> so my husband won. It was kind of irritating. I really, yeah, but he had a really good idea. He took three Italian words. So corso is path. Sa is, you know, the verb uh, to know. And va is to go. So, and and no one had it registered <laughs> online. And it's really close to things, Microsoft's Cortina, and I think they paid more to get the name than I did. <laughs> so that's where it came from. Lovely. I love that. I think it's so, <laughs> and it does, it does have that ring of sort of like, I feel like I've heard of it before. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, we wanted, we want to do a little exercise together and we're going to do this in two different ways. We, part of what we want this to be a community brainstorm and we want to find clever ways to capture it. So these are our clever ways, thanks Google for allowing us to do this, of trying to capture some of you, some of your ideas. So what we want to brainstorm together, before we share, hey, here are our cool ideas, we want to hear your ideas. So imagine that, that uh, Corsava is your home for list building. And I'm imagining that most of us are counselors on this. If Corsava is your home for list building, what does that, what does this platform and one way of thinking about this, and this is a little bit more abstract. Some of you will dig this and some of you will, this will can be like, what is he talking about? But if you imagine, I've been watching lots of videos on the metaverse and the metaverse is a virtual space where you can go in and interact with people and get questions answered and do all kinds of things. If Corsava was a space in the metaverse, in the virtual world, what kinds of things could you do there? Now, for some of you, you're like, wait, what? Let me get real concrete. I'm gonna put a link in here in the chat. So for those of you who are open to it, I'm sharing a Google Doc where you can click on this link and you can actually just hop into the Google Doc and put your name. I'll share my screen for a second. And you can actually just type in, here are my thoughts. And we're gonna do this like a like five to seven minute sort of free write as it were. And so all you do here is you put your name. So my name is Jenny. And then here are some thoughts that I have. There we go, anonymous chameleon, don't be shy. So <laughs> ask you all to just put your name here and then answer these questions. Imagine that Corsava is the ideal space for college list building. What would it look like and what would it allow students and counselors to do? But we wanna invite you to step outside the current box of what Corsava has been or what you think it's been and dream a little bit big for a minute. What else could Corsava do even beyond list building? 
Now, some of you are looking at this and going, I, what is this Google Doc he's got? He, and so I'm going to give a second option. And this is a Google form. And it's going to have a couple other questions for you to answer. But that's another place to sort of capture some thoughts. So either one of these is good for us. We don't really care too much. But we want to open up space for just, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second, for just five to seven minutes. And I would put on music, but I don't know what everybody's taking. <laughs> Uh, so we could just do it. dream for a little bit together. <laughs> so I'm going to do a thing that isn't often done on webinars and live sessions, but I'm actually just going to like be quiet and invite quiet for just this little portion of our afternoon so that folks don't have to hear what we're saying and then also think about what they're writing. So for just a few minutes, and actually I'm going to share my screen again, even though whoever's at the top might feel self-conscious, that's okay. And I want to invite y'all to just write, write to us. Tell us what you think.
These are great. I'm so enjoying reading these. So fun to read. Yes. I want to ping this question now for everybody, wherever you are in your thinking. Now let's step outside the current box and dream even bigger. So beyond list building, because a lot of these suggestions are great and speak to some of the stuff that Corsava is either <laughs> has done, in some cases has done, or you know we're talking about doing. But even beyond list building, I'm just curious to just spend a couple more minutes and just let's think outside the box. What else could this platform do? If, if you imagine that this is sort of like a home for helping students find best fit schools and, and then beyond that, what else? And you totally get credit if we adopt any of these, Jennifer, we'll send you a check. Hey, we might invite you to come and build it with us. <laughs> Yeah, Jennifer is the first, probably not the only person to be like, are they just trying to rent my brain for free right now? Uh, a little, <laughs> but hopefully we build something together. That's part of what today is about. <laughs> and by the way if you are a Corsava super fan and you're like I would love to find some way to collaborate or I just I heart Corsava if on that Google form that we shared and I'll reshare that again if you would just note that and say hey you know when I've always thought it would be cool to somehow, I don't know, collaborate. Even if you don't know what the idea is, but you just have that sort of energy, note that on the on the form. You can just, there's a little spot at the bottom that says, is there anything else you want us to know? Or if you're like, I, 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 I'm, I'm interested in getting involved, but I don't know exactly what form Ethan's talking about. You can email, <laughs> you can email us. You can email, I'm sorry, Angie, this, we might get a few emails, but Angie at Corsava.com. And the subject could just be, I'm in, like <laughs> Jenny said. And then just give us a few sentences about, you know, your interest or enthusiasm or something like that. And we'll, we'll create a list because what we talked about, one of the things we're talking about doing is putting together a, a small group of folks who could kind of advise as, as we kind of move forward, kind of a project team, so. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Put that picture back, Jenny. That's great. Yeah, I think it it changed. <laughs> That's awesome. A green room. <laughs> I love that. Oh, there's so many people I want to say hello to. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's the next step of this journey is... We want to now comment on each other's comments. So the way that I'm going to invite you to do this is, let's say I want folks to, you can start at the bottom or you can start from the top if you want. But for example, you know, here Jenny has written, what about adding video connections like to Campus Real? I might just say something like, love this idea. 
I haven't thought of that. Yes, already talked to Campus Real too. We oh, have, well, there you go. And so already talked. That, to but Real. it's not implemented, so that's super fun to see it there. Yes. So yeah, those guys were excited about working. I like those guys too. So yeah. here's what we want you to invite you to do: is we want you to sort of comment on each other's somebody. Oh, somebody don't delete whoever's highlighting the whole thing. Um, <laughs> we'd love to invite you to comment Google Doc style, as though this was a, a big essay. And and just do this, and you can. And if if your name isn't there because you're anonymous ant eater or anonymous armadillo or whatever, <laughs> then you might need to just put. When you make a comment, you might just need to put "love this idea." Yes, uh, Ethan Sawyer. You know, just so that we know who it's coming from. If you want us to know who it's coming from, okay. So we're gonna spend. I know this is maybe weird, or maybe you haven't done this before. We do this on my team sometimes, and it's funny to do it with sixty-five people at once. Google Docs are usually good till about 100, but we want to invite you to just scroll through this. Is anybody doing it yet? There we go. Vincent thinks Fran's idea is genius. That's the kind of, that's what we want. <laughs> so if you'll just scroll up and down on the doc, comment on each other as writing, and also you can comment on each other's comments. So I agree, Ethan. It's always fun to see people come up with new card ideas too. We get a lot of those and and there's there's a lot of potential. Mentoring was one that came up a lot. Majors, yep, yeah, definitely.
Libby's comment there, I, you know, we used to have a wild card in the old deck and that's come up a lot. The write in, write in, you know, a few of their cards and it's fun to see what, what are popular cards, what new ones might come up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep going Anne. What are some other things that you're, I'm just curious what this is. Yeah. Doing. You know, it's, it's interesting. I, I think a lot of people aren't aware of the data that we use to, to uh, build the lists and like Jeff and Jenny's, I mean, they're some of their, the, you know, the top schools for certain things are already in, in the cafe. And so the cafe, I think um, as it goes forward, I just hope more and more people understand what's in there. And then there's more and more data that's really helpful that we all use. So the point originally was to have a place where all those books and all those things in your office that are, <laughs> He's sitting around and those piece of papers, you know, all the stuff from tours and everything is all in one place. So if we see things on the listserv, sometimes people will go in and rate top film schools. So that I think needs to, to kind of, uh, I think people need to be aware of what went into building that. Yeah. Could we, could I double click on that for just a minute in terms yeah. of the cafe itself? So yeah. just to be super blunt and super, yeah. you know, clear with folks, there is an opportunity if, well, actually you, you can explain it, Anne, but like tell, tell us about the cafe. I know Angie already did a little bit, but will you just give us the behind the scenes of what, you know, what goes into those, those recommendations that come forth? Yeah, it was, it was built originally kind of like a, a, a cake, layer cake. And so on the bottom is iPads for some of that, what's called binary data, like how big the school is and for size and things like that. And then on top of that were a lot of uh, lists and resources that I already use in my office. Um, and so those lists were added to the, to the algorithm to help um, um, and, and think everything from out, out, outside magazine ratings to things that I would use like Jeff and Jenny's tables. So a lot of, a lot of really valuable resources that are trusted uh, went into building those recommendations and there's great room for improvement. So I think that's what I'm most, Steve's, a lot of Steve's lists are already in there. I know someone said it'd be great if Steve's lists were in there. They're, Steve and I, you know, collaborate too. And he, you know, a lot of his stuff is already in there. So, and if I see things on the listserv, so I think, but there, I think there are ways to make it, um, easier to use obviously and then and and really have those things sort of pop out more what went into this research yeah. for building lists yeah one of the things you mentioned steve I, I was on the phone with him on monday or tuesday he's working on this new edition of you know college finder and i said to him boy i think it would be so cool to we've got such knowledge on this mm -hmm. call in, in our community to you know to get folks talking more because you know, there is, I was talking with Lauren Lindstrom, Angie and I were talking with Lauren about how oftentimes as counselors, we have sort of like these notes that we've done on college tours or anything. Wouldn't it be nice to just kind of have it all in one place? And that's, that was the original intent. Yeah. That's the idea of the cafe. I've been on those buses enough times where you're getting information about colleges you're not even visiting. I mean, people are talking about schools and you're learning so much on the bus. Right. And then I don't know about you guys, but I have pieces of paper from, you know, 10 years ago that I still haven't, you know, written on my notes. So this, the cafe was really built, the original intent. And, and down the road, I think it, it has a lot of potential for being a place where those notes are stored and shared if you want or, you know, share or not. And the ratings. Um, and so I think that to me is uh, one of those, one of those really exciting things because, it's it it would be open to all counselors. So yeah. one of the things I want to shift this because we got about 15 yeah. minutes here. I want to shift this. This is great. To to we want to share a little bit about some of the things that we're excited about. So <laughs> one of the things that I'm excited about is you know, in conversation with Steve over the last few weeks, we just did this list building course. Some of you maybe were on it, is we've been talking about, yeah, how do we get more folks kind of communicating so that we can up level these lists and they're even more well informed and even more well updated because as soon as if we talk about including you know the college finder list as soon as they're printed they start becoming outdated right they sort of start going bad as it were and so part of what i'm interested in and we we, I'm, we don't have 
Steve is off at IECA and then HECA over the next few weeks. But one of the things we're talking about is is bringing folks together in a in a in a in a bigger way to create a big collaboration where we can share. For example, let's evaluate these lists together and go. Well, is this truly is this school still good for X? You know, is still good for Y? And how do we know? Like, what is evidence that we could use to tag it so that we know some of the stuff will be based on data? But in other cases, it's sort of anecdotal. And how could we begin to support that with a sort of larger, um, you know, what, what is the capturing system? We've got sort of a draft of it here, but how do we make that even better so that we up level these lists and so that we're not working in sort of silo? You know, Steve's over here working on College Finder and Persona. It's like, how do we work together? So that's something that I'm really excited about. And um, as soon as he gets back from his trips, we're going <laughs> to we're going to get together and talk. I, I, I think I said I wasn't going to talk about him on this session, but, you know, because he's, you know, because he came up and mentioned him. Angie, what are you what are you excited about? What's something either from this doc or that, you know, from conversations that you're excited about in terms of what's next? Um, I'm excited. I, I unmuted myself. Right. All right. Um, I. I'm actually really excited to have new, new energy. Um, I think uh, Anne pointed out that it was like the two of us for so long, like COVID buddies. Off to see the wizard together. Um, and I have loved um, working with Anne and I'm really like a little bit heartbroken that I don't see her, you know, virtually because we haven't seen each other in person much, but um, virtually every day. But uh, but I'm also really excited to have like new energy and and ideas in the game because um, I you know I mentioned before there's a lot of things that I see from the support end of like let's fix this or let's do this or uh, but there's then you get those other like ideas and you can level all of that up. Super exciting. So, yeah. Anne and I, you know, have spent a lot of time like rethinking like how how do we ask questions of students and how do we just get like better better answers? <laughs> um and you know what are the what are the ways that we can kind of distill those like in-person conversations into this experience for the student who comes to Corsava without a counselor to you know help them out, etc. Um, and and I'm excited to have new eyes and energy on that and to, you know, have momentum forward. Yeah. And I'm excited for the sun. Do you guys see this? I'm getting a sun break. <laughs> <laughs> what about for you, Anne? What, what are you excited about as you think about, you know, I, I, sort of, there, I know that that can go in a lot of different directions, mm -hmm. but what, what's been, is there anything that sort of has been sort of in the back of my mind, like, oh, it would be so cool if... Well, I think I, I would go back to when I really uh, took it from the hard copy cards to the cloud. To me, it was a, a mobile app where all these counselors, I would watch all these counselors on the bus. And if there was a way to interact and, and rate all of those things at the college and rate the cards while you're there or when you get home and put notes in there. And that's that's how the cafe is designed. But it needs to be. And that's when Angie and I talked about having a, a new dashboard that would just like everything's opened up and what have you seen recently? And then go do what you need to do with your students. So I think a way, and that's what Ethan's talking about with that kind of collaborative community type feel um, on, on the mobile front, like send your students and there, you already can do this, have your students rate their cards at the colleges that are on their list in Corsava that you, that they've entered into their Corsava account. And we have a tremendous number of students rating mm -hmm. their cards at colleges. And so maybe, well over 300,000. 300,000. Yep. So, I mean, so to do that for our counselor world and then make that would build into the list behind the scene to make the list live. I mean, it would, it, it's sort of a real time thing happening. So that's what I'd love to see. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited about that too. If, by the way, for those of you who are on the call thinking, when are they going to get to the part where they tell us what they're doing? <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> this is not that call. What we're doing is this is an intake call and we're, you know, synthesizing. I will say that we do have some ideas that we aren't quite ready to share yet that are like, you know, on the brink, but part of it involves, we're, we're kind of hinting at some things that, you know, there will be a separate webinar for that when we're ready to be like, okay, here's the thing and here's how it works and here's how it goes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, 
there's for me there's like a sense of community i want to come back to that word that's i feel like that's possible and technology makes it even more possible but what i want to make sure that we have is like i want to make sure that we do it in an efficient way and i say this because i feel like one of the things and we talked about this a bunch where we have all these separate sort of conversations in this Facebook group, what schools are good for this. And we have, you know, on the talk list and we have all these conversations and I think it's important to have different conversations, in different places, but wouldn't it be great to finally be able to go, okay, here's a place where we can put it and it's feeding into, you know, a system that allows us to all benefit from all the separate conversations. Cause it's so much to track. It's so hard to, I'd have to stay up, you know, I have to stay up 24 hours a day to be able to track all of the, what schools are. And I know that there are folks out there like me when I started doing this, who are like, oh, I should probably keep lists of all these. <laughs> and, you know, when I met, you know, and I saw the college finder and I met Stephen, I was like, oh, thank goodness somebody did it as a starting place. But certainly technology is going to allow us to do even better. Um, There's some questions that have come in that I want to get to make sure we don't skip over. Suzette, for example, asked, did you say students are rating their impressions of the cards or the colleges? And you They're say- rating the cards. So once the student or you put the schools, the colleges on their list, in their account, they then can rate those, their top must have or would be nice cards at the colleges on their list. And it's a great assignment. And I think that's what's happening. A lot of high schools are sending kids. Okay, so you've got this list, you've got your list. Now go to that school and what's happening is, so they're not like, ooh, the climbing wall is so cool. When, when really th- those aren't the important things they need to check out. So what we're seeing is a ton of ratings from col- uh, students coming in for their top cards at each of the colleges on their list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's a both, right? It's the, mm-hmm. the specific college. I, my And I tell this story too often, so sorry, folks, but... Um, my niece came to a point in her college decision process where she informed me that she had three schools she'd gotten into that were all equal and she was going to roll a dice to decide where to go. And we had a very quick (laughs) panicked adult intervention of like, no, you can't roll a dice with, you know, college. Um, But sitting down with, she'd already done the card sort. So sitting down and looking at those three schools and going through her, she just did her must have cards. She didn't even look at her in, at her would be nice cards or anything else, but just taking a moment to reflect on each of her must have cards allowed her to see that one school actually did tip much higher than another. And that um, there really was a good spot. For and you her can to go see their, yeah. better than rolling a dice. And you can see their ratings. So you can see how their visits went. Yeah. And and so the must have and would be nice cards automatically populate for them to do that under each of their schools. And they can add comments that, that you can see or that they can keep private. Mm-hmm. So that that's kind of a, a fun feature that I think could be expanded more too. Mm-hmm. But I have a question for the group, not for Angie and Ann, but for everybody but Angie and Ann. One of the things that we got to figure out is because you, if you, as you notice, as you all know, Corsava is basically free. You basically, you know, you do the card sorts and it's awesome. And then you can join the cafe and it's very inexpensive. How, here's my question for y'all. How does, not for Angie and Ann, how does Corsava make money? What suggestions do y'all have in terms of monetizing? So I'm going to float that one out. And I'm just curious. I mean, I wish we were in a room together. But I'd love to just hear what folks have to say. We didn't put that one on the form, I regret. Um, But I'd love to just hear. Some folks have suggested potentially working with other platforms. You know, what is it? What's the idea? Do we do, do we ramp up a bunch of traffic and then sell ads? Is it? (laughs) Hey. What I'm, I'm going to nix that one, but I, I, you know, just... I'm just being silly because I'm trying to get folks. One of my <laughs> teachers, I'm going to tell you where that suggestion came from. One of my <laughs> teachers used to do a, a bad line reading so that we would do a better line reading. And so we would be on stage and he would say, it's the line is like this. And we'd be like, that's terrible. It's more like this. And then he'd be like, "There, I tricked you into giving me the, the good line reading. 
So, okay, <laughs> Kathy says maybe charge colleges to upload a video of their campus. Okay, so that could be a way. Schools, what would schools, what do you get the sense that schools would pay for? Um, so that's an idea. Curious to hear from other folks. No ads. No ads. <laughs> we talked about doing that on I college. Do. <laughs> well, we talked about doing that on college essay guy, doing ads because, you know, we've been ad free. And when we did the math, it actually, I think there's, there's a, because we had 3 million visits last year, I think that equates to like tens of thousands of dollars a month, you know, if we wanted to do that. Um, and we still haven't done it because we found other ways to monetize. So let's see, adding, to, okay. So Elizabeth's saying adding to College Planner Pro. Well, let's assume we're adding to College Planner Pro. What happens then to the price of, does the price of College Planner Pro go up a little bit to account for that? If so, you can do the quick math. Imagine how much it goes up and then how many users would do it. Would that be enough to run the tech? Cause the tech, you know, the tech to do some of this stuff is gonna be expensive. Um, somebody asked if we're going to IECA. I'm not going to IECA this year because so many conferences, but we're having a big party at NACAC if anybody wants to join. <laughs> um, let's see. My statistician husband developed a system for ranking college choices, assigning weights. It's pretty simple, but it works. Lovely. Fran, email us. Sorry, that was a private message. Um, I'm was... literally writing to her right now. <laughs> awesome. Maybe college sponsors, colleges sponsor like how they do in College Express, okay? So it's another college. A yearly membership fee for counselors or high schools. Claire, what should that fee be? How much do you think that should be for a year for counselors or high schools? I'm, let's, let's riff here together. Um, let's see, would vote for integrating with other platforms. It's a lot to expect students to take notes in both platforms, especially if you use CPP. Yeah, that's come up a lot today, I've noticed. That's really great. If you charge colleges, then colleges will have, that have funds will participate. At, I was joking about ads, y'all. Just to just charge to use it. It's so valuable to counselors. How much should we charge, Lauren? I'm curious. I'd you love know, to. Hear what's yeah. <laughs> well, and Suzette has an interesting comment too about yeah. um, Go ahead. colleges because I, I some colleges have actually included Corsava in their marketing materials to say, do this before you visit campus. Yeah. And so I, I'm sure that could be uh, that's something to, to consider. But some some colleges, you know, really want kids to do that before they come. Mm -hmm. Leslie's saying no. <laughs> I love how affordable it is, but you could raise the prices. I think it's worth more. OK, so I'm getting we're getting that general vibe that folks are saying some kind of yearly or monthly thing would be good. Matt saying, don't charge public high school counselors. IEC is sure, public school counselors, no. Matt, I'm curious if you're an IEC or a public school counselor. <laughs> um, annual membership for consultants, okay. Let's see. Um, if you add it to Guided Path, you'd have to add it to CPP. That's it, we're gonna <laughs> bid war. We'll start a bidding war between Guided Path and CPP. Um, let's see, if doing a yearly fee, I would want a flat fee for unlimited students. That's good to know. This is helpful. $50 a year. Well, if it was $50 a year, do the math real quick. I mean, how many people we'd have to get a thousand counselors to be able to opt in for $50 a year. And that would only bring in $50,000 in revenue. So, you know, that might hire a part of an Angie, but <laughs> then we'd have to figure out how, what about all that tech? So I, I'm not saying no to it, but we, we, we have to figure out the numbers on it. Uh, charge college and universities, but not CBOs, public school counselors. Okay. Colleges, cheap chipping in. Please keep it affordable. Yeah, we're trying to figure it out, Aaron. We're open to your ideas. Uh, monthly subscription. Louise says $75 a month. Okay, so now we've got the we've got somewhere between $4 a month and $75 a month. <laughs> we're dialing it in here. Um, let's see. Public schools can pay. They pay for Naviance and SCAR. Okay. Matt says retired high school counselor. Now and then I see great. Flat fee. Okay. So you're saying flat fee, I'm guessing per month or per year. Okay. I think that's what you're saying. And then folks are saying colleges. So that's, you know, we're kind of in the, we're kind of in the same ballpark here, I think, just in terms, just to give you hundred folks who are here, um, a flat fee. I'm, I'm assuming you mean per year because it, it yeah, I think most people are saying a year or mm -hmm. Yeah, flat fee. We right. are flat fee right now. <laughs> These add up for us, I see. So something like a flat fee for the year. Okay, I hear you. Okay, got it. Okay, thanks for this. We might there might be another uh, you know questionnaire that we send out with sort of like 
pricing because folks were saying it's some kind of annual flat fee for for students. All right, thank you. This is super. This is super helpful. Thanks for. I had an itch, and you y'all just scratched it with with some of these answers. I really appreciate it. So we're almost at time, and um, we want to just hear if there are any. You don't need to answer this. How does College Essay Guy website make its money? <laughs> Email me, Matt. I'll tell you. <laughs> um, that's great. I'm glad that you don't know that. I think that's really cool. Um, but um, we're we're excited to be. I'm excited that a hundred of y'all stayed on the whole time. That we're we're excited that that you have stayed with us, and um, we're going to be in touch real soon. In the next, you know, couple months, <laughs> we're we're kind of going back into the kitchen now, and we're going to take all this and and see what we can cook up. And, um, and we're going to be in touch. Um, yeah, I don't know that I have a lot to say in terms of like grounding or like rounding off thoughts. Anne, anything you want to add or Angie? No, I'm just really excited. I think there's, there are going to be some really fun ideas that come up and, and it will come to fruition. So that's, that's the exciting part. I know you probably have endless emails from me. Oh, we're really excited. We're going to do this. And then <laughs> maybe don't, don't follow through on it during COVID, but we're trying. So this is this is where it's going to be fun to just see it go to the next level with everybody's input. That's the best part. And there's nobody better to do that with, you know, these exercises. I was excited he was going to do an exercise today, of course. <laughs> um, I just, this is not very inspiring, but just logistically, I tried to respond to as many of your questions as possible, folks. Um, I may have missed some of them along the way, um, but uh, feel free to reach out to me at either hello at Corsava.com or Angie at Corsava.com. Um, I know a couple of you have kind of deeper questions about how to use the platform and some other folks have some other questions as well. So um, just apologies if I missed anyone. I was trying to keep up, but uh, for Sarah, who asked a question about the hard copy cards, I somehow managed to like edit your question instead of, so <laughs> hopefully you saw the answer. I don't know. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. Thanks. And thanks, thanks for everybody. How many of those, Angie? Thank you all. We will talk to you soon. We send you all the heart emojis and have a yes. beautiful rest of your day. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone.